Take your Bible and turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. That's where I'd like to start this morning. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but counterwise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life, now look what it says, for he that will love life, and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue. I like to preach on, for he that will love life. For he that will love life. Amen. You know, in this day and age, we have plenty of tribulations, troubles, problems. Uh, Job says, man is born unto a trouble as the sparks fly upward. Am I? But no matter what you go through in life, you can actually love life. And you can enjoy life. And I've seen some of the happiest Christians, the ones that's going through the most hard trials. I've seen some of the happiest guys, the ones going through trouble. And they're still happy. And they still love life. That's why I want to preach on this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray that... Uh, this message will be a blessing to someone here, an encouragement. I pray that everybody here will realize that you are the source of peace and joy and happiness in their life and not the things that is around them or the circumstances of their life. And I pray that you'll take in a, fill me now with your Holy Spirit. I pray that you'll speak through me. Uh, nothing can be done unless you do it. I know that. There's nothing that I can do in my own power here. I pray that you'll use me this morning. I pray that the hearts will be tender toward the preaching of your word and you'll speak to each and every individual here. Show them something out of this message that they need to hear today. And I pray that you'll take and encourage them in their walk with you. Help them to have a victorious Christian life in you. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Now there's some things that go along with this passage that has to do with the actions of the Christian. Amen. And uh, sin destroys the peace in our life. And we'll address some of them sins. But I'd like uh, to point out, when a man lives a Christian life the way that he should, he will live life. I mean, he'll love life. And he'll have some good days. He'll have good days. You say, uh, Pastor Winter, you've had some pretty dark days. You've had some bad days. Yeah, I know. But you know what? Lord gave me some peace that passes all understanding in those days. And there was joy in the midst of sorrow. There's always joy in the midst of sorrow. And if you can't see the joy in the midst of sorrow, you haven't learned how to live a victorious Christian life and keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Your eyes is on the circumstances around you. Or your eyes is on others, or your eyes is on yourself and the sin that you've allowed into your life. It's not on Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee, because he trusteth in thee. Isaiah 26, 3. Amen. Say, what is perfect peace? Perfect peace is eyes that stayed upon Jesus Christ. If your eyes is on the Lord, he can give you peace in the time of trouble. He can give you peace, he can give you joy. Bible says that in His presence there is joy forevermore. When you got saved, weren't you seated together in heavenly places with Him? Oh. <laughs> so shouldn't there be pleasures forevermore? 
Amen. Think about it. Now, that's that's a tough principle to apply to our lives when we see the troubles around us. Or the sorrow comes. And it does come. You don't have to look for it. It will find you. Man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. I don't care if you're saved, lost, heathen, or a saint. You're going to find trouble in this life. It's just part of life. Part of life. Trouble comes. You can thank Adam for that. It's never going to go away until Jesus Christ comes back. <laughs> All right? It's there. It's part of life. Trouble's part of life. But uh, you can still love life. You know, it's sin and lack of fellowship with the Lord that destroys the joy in our life. Well, as Christians, we can sin and draw away from the Lord. That's called a breaking of fellowship. Not a breaking of sonship, but a breaking of fellowship. You're still a son, but that fellowship and peace will go away. Uh, When somebody's saved and they live like the lost and they allow sin to reign in their mortal bodies, it takes away peace. The Bible says, There is no peace, saith my God, unto the wicked. There's no peace in sin. I'd like to preach a little bit on how we can have this peace and we can love life. First of all, you have to see the blessings that the Lord's given. Psalms 34 a, it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. Your walk of peace will not start until you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your walk of joy will not start until you receive Jesus Christ. There's many lost people out there and they're trying to find peace. They're trying to find joy. And they may seek many different groups to find that in. They might even go after religion. And religion is a sorry substitute for Jesus Christ. And they may go after money. And money doesn't bring peace. You say, yeah, but it can buy joy. Only temporary joy. Not any lasting joy. It grows wings and flies away, the Bible says. (laughs) I mean, it does. I mean, uh, I think on the two sides of a dollar bill, they should have made two big old wings. (laughs) The wings of the eagle. You know, that's so so it would fly away. (laughs) You know, it goes away. It's not there. That's not going to bring you peace and joy. Jesus Christ is the start of peace. You have to have Jesus Christ. I've I've been preaching on the street, and one of the things that I've been preaching is do you have peace? Do you have peace? I want to find somebody that's searching for peace because I know who to introduce them to, the Prince of Peace. Amen? I need to find somebody that wants peace, that's looking for peace. You're not going to find it in the United Nations. They've been trying for years. They've failed miserably. (laughs) Okay, they haven't wronged it, okay? You're not going to find it there. Your journey of peace starts with the Lord. But here we are, Christians. We've received Jesus Christ. You've put your faith in Christ. Now I, ass- I, I would like to assume that everybody here has put their faith in Christ. If you have done that, you need to do that before you walk out this building this morning. Amen. You need to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. You need peace. So it starts with the Lord. But then, as a Christian lives his life, He's been saved. The Holy Spirit comes inside of him. The Bible says that we can grieve the Holy Spirit. So do we always have peace as a Christian? No. Many Christians don't have peace. Many Christians go through times where they don't have joy. And they lose the joy of their salvation. They lose the joy of the fellowship of the Lord. I'm not saying they lose salvation or they lose the Lord, but they lose that joy. They lose that joy. Why do they lose that joy? Because of sin. Because of sin. Look here in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. First thing you need to realize is if you're going to have good peace, you need to get control of your speech. 
You need to get control of your speech. It says uh, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Now, the book of James gives us a lot of advice on the tongue and how hard that is to do. It says once you get control of that tongue, man, you got the whole, you got the thing licked. You got the whole body licked. Once you get control of the tongue, uh, I mean, it's full of unruly evil, full of poison. Refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Guile is trickery. In other words, your career as a salesman is over. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can't be a politician anymore. No. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you, you know, the best thing about President Trump was he was actually a president that had uh, little guile. He actually said what he meant many times. Got him in a lot of trouble. I mean, there's a lot of things I disagreed about with the man, but that was one thing I appreciated a little bit about him, was he actually said what he meant. Speak no guile. What man is he that desireth life and love of many days? They, uh, so so uh, to have your thoughts and speech be good, you need to get control of your tongue. Right. You, you know, the uh, Bible says in Psalms chapter 34, verse 12 and 13, it says, What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days, that he may see good? Then the very next verse, in verse 13, it says, Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking God. It's a direct cross-reference in Psalms 34, 13. Direct cross-reference. You know, you know, a lot of times we destroy our peace by not controlling our tongue. We make many enemies with our tongue. Many enemies that we shouldn't have. Why? Because pride and arrogancy comes out of our mouth. Right. Hatred comes out of our mouth. Envy comes out of our mouth. You, you want to know a man's character? You stop and you listen to what he says. In Matthew twelve thirty four, it says, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth Speak it. You, you, you want to know what a man's made of? You listen to what he says. You listen to what he says. You, you know, songs tell what a person's made of. Songs. You've seen country music songs? That means you're a booze-drinking, fornicating bum. <laughs> Play country music backwards, what do you have? You get your wife back, your dog don't die, you quit fornicating, you, <laughs> you know, quit drinking, you, and your Chevy doesn't roll down a hill. <laughs> you know, that's uh, if you play it backwards. Uh, you know, I, I had a little bit of fun this morning. I figured I'd look up the top ten country music songs of today or of all times. And do they show joy? Here's the titles of three of them. It says, Friends in Low Places. That's the title. Now, unfortunately, I know what some of these songs are because they play it all the time at work. That's a, that's a song of a guy going getting his peace and joy in a bar. Friends in Low Places. Second one was Before He Cheats. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before he cheats, <laughs> fornicators. Uh, he stopped loving her today was the number one hit of all times. He stopped loving her today. Really? <laughs> That's what they view as the number one hit? I mean, well, one of them at least, they got a country boy can survive in there. <laughs> I mean, but I'm not saying I'm going to condone that one, but... You know, that's country music. I mean, I kind of like the bluegrass tunes. I like the banjo. But have you ever listened to bluegrass when it's not uh, the gospel bluegrass? Somebody always dies in bluegrass. Somebody always dies. And then I was going to take and look up the top ten rocks and rap. I like, you know what, I ain't even going there. I'm not even dealing with that stuff. I have to, I mean, we got these new kids at work and they're playing 
heavy metal and rap. I mean, the rap just drives me nuts. And you talk about out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. These young people are listening to that and you wonder why you got this lack of respect and killing and murder and rioting in the streets if that's what they're listening to. And that's what's coming out of there. That is nothing but vulgarity and vileness that's coming out of their mouth. That's in their heart. Oh, it's just a song. Somebody doesn't sing something unless it's in their heart. How about the old hymn? Is the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful? There is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory. Yeah, you, know, you know, I can go on and on. It is well with my soul. Have you ever read the story behind that song? He's writing that after hearing that all his children and belongings drowned and went down in the ocean. Only his wife was saved. Yeah, he's singing, it is well with my soul. Peace and joy and sorrow. The sorrow comes, but the joy and the peace doesn't have to go. Sorrow comes. When Rebecca died, there was a preacher that had gone through the same thing that I went through. And he gave me some advice. He says, all your family's going to come up. He says, grab a hold of the joyful moments and enjoy them. He says, you don't have to look for the sorrow. It'll find you. But enjoy the moments. I took his advice on that. And let me tell you something. That's good advice. That's good advice. Sorrow will find you. Grab a hold of the joyful moments. Your life does not end when sorrow comes. You can still love life as it says. You can enjoy it out of the abundance of the heart and mouth speaking. I, I talked to my brother-in-law uh, right before I preached Rebecca's funeral. He says, man, there's, I mean, there's got to be one song we can end up with. I said, something to lighten the mood. And you know, one, one of the things, Rebecca, for some reason, Rebecca always talked about what to do if she ever passed. She used to talk about all the time. And one thing, she, she hated funerals. And what she said, really hated was these gloomy songs that they would sing about passing. She goes, if I ever die, you sing something happy. Something joyful. So after I got done preaching her funeral, I made the congregation sing, Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day that fix my heart. At a funeral. After I preached it. Happy day, happy day. That was when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray. And live rejoicing every day. Remember that? Remember that? That's what we saw. You say, uh, w w what is that? Not losing the joy of your salvation. Amen. You know, the sorrow in a funeral of a death of a loved one that's saved is them departing and you missing. Right. But the Lord says, blessing in the eyes of the Lord for the death of the saints. Right. There's the joy. Yeah. So you can have sorrow in life, but you can also have joy at the same time. And you can have peace at the same time. Say, uh, I would like to uh, have joy in my life at all times. Well, listen to the words of your mouth and what comes out. Because the words that come out of your mouth will show the joy that's in your heart if it's there. And it will also show bitterness, envy, Wrath. You, you really want to know what's in your heart? Wait till you're working on a car and you smash your finger with a three pound sledge. The words that come out is what's in your heart. And then you can get down on your knees and say, Lord, why is that in my heart?
Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So you hit your finger with that sledgehammer, the words that come out, you know what I've learned to do? I've learned to go, <clears throat> not say a word. Not say a word. But a bunch of cuss words and vulgarity comes out of your mouth, you need to get down and say, Lord, why is that in my heart? Why is that in my heart? Because it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You get mad at somebody, and you just start saying mean things about them, just coming out, coming out. Why is that in your heart? Lack of forgiveness there, a little bit of bitterness. You know, watch it. I always look forward. Number two, have a merry heart at all times. You know, the Bible says, A merry heart maketh cheerful countenance, but the sorrow of the heart, the spirit, is broken. In Proverbs 17, 22, it says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Have you ever been around somebody that they have a merry heart all the time? You know, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Somebody that's joyful all the time. Uh, Simone is a very positive woman. When, when she's not positive, I'm like, well, what's, what's, what's wrong? Is there something wrong? But she has a merry heart. You know, and, the, and that's a blessing. It's a joy to be around. What about you? If people are around you, are you like dry bones just drying people out around you? It's like, man. Gloom, doom forever. You know? That's just after getting by somebody, they'll either be in like a refreshing drink of water or they're going to be like a sand in the mouth that's just going to dry you out. That will be some joy that comes out of your heart. The key to having a merry heart is to do things that are acceptable to God. In Ecclesiastes 9.9 it says, Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life, thy vanities which he hath given thee under his son, all the days of thy vanities, for that is thy portion in his life and thy labor which thou takest under thy son. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. It says, uh, live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest. So life is full of vanity. Everything dies, everything goes away, everything perishes, nothing stays. It's like a vapor that goes away. It says, live joyfully, joyfully. Joy is not a state of circumstances. It's a state of mind. Write it down. It's not a state of circumstances. It's a state of mind. Does the Lord control your mind and heart? Then you should have joy. It's in the heart. It's not the circumstances around you. Oh, COVID, it's terrible. Oh no, my president didn't get elected. Boo hoo. Well, the Lord's still in control of the world. We know how it ends. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know? Amen. Not that worried about. You know? I don't enjoy watching the evil progress. But I know how it ends. I read the last chapter in the book. Amen. You know? You always, if you want to know if you want to read a book, read the last chapter first, and then you decide whether or not you want to read it. You know, I read the last chapter of the book. You know, I'm not worried about the details in the middle as much as I am the end. I know the end. I always look forward to something good in time of sorrow. 1 Peter 3, 9 says, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but counterwise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. In other words, you don't render evil for evil. I'll get you because you got me. Vengeance. The Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. I'm going to get him. Railing for railing. He did, well, you don't know what he did to me. Well, if you do the same thing to him, you're no better than he was. Amen? But counterwise, blessing. 
Jesus Christ said, Bless them that curse thee. Do good unto them that hate thee. And so in doing, ye shall heap coals of fire upon his head. Now you don't literally do the coals of fire, you let the Lord do that. <laughs> it says that's what's going to happen. But what are you to do? You're to be a blessing. You know, you know what God said to Abraham? It says, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Abraham was told to be a blessing. Be a blessing. You know what we're supposed to do? You, you want to have joy in your life? Then be a blessing. There's no greater joy than to be a blessing to someone else. You know the greatest joy in life is leading somebody to the Lord. After getting saved yourself. Leading somebody. Else. I mean, there's no greater joy than that. I have killed some magnificent bucks. They even got me a bull elk. Got some really nice fish. And they were fun. I enjoyed it. But man, that ain't nothing compared to winning a soul to the Lord. Nothing compared to winning a soul to the Lord. Be a blessing. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Be a blessing to somebody today. Always look for something to do good in time of sorrow. After Rebecca passed, there was a revival being preached and I needed something for my heart. So I went out praying, Lord, give me something. And this guy, he gets up, I never, I didn't know the guy, but he got up and he preached a message. And he preached what to do in the worst catastrophe of your life. And what he preached on was the stages of the cross. How the Lord looked out for others. He told John to take care of Mary. How he forgave. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. How he led a man to the Lord, the thief on the cross. And you know what the Lord does through the stages? He continues to be a blessing to others. He continues to take care of others. You know, you, you, you know how to spell joy? J, Jesus. O, others. And then last, you. Jesus, others, you. That's joy. You want joy? Be a blessing. You know another thing, how you can have joy through the Christian life? Is, here's some good practical advice. Put a little cream and sugar in your coffee. In other words, sweeten up life a little. Find a hobby and do it that you enjoy doing that's innocent. Find stuff to do that's a joy. You know, in and, and the hardest times of my life, I usually go fishing. I go fishing because I enjoy doing it. You know, Jesus Christ walked on water. You ever ask yourself, why did he do that? Maybe because he had a thrill ride doing it. He walking on water. I'd walk on water if I could. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? You know, he comes back in the clouds riding a white horse. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you ride a spaceship? It's fun to ride horses, jumping from cloud to cloud. Haven't you ever rode a horse up in the mountains? That's fun. That's fun. Come back riding a white horse. Yeah, you ever look at some of the things that he does? You know... The Bible talks about the Lord laughing. You know, I think the Lord enjoys everything that He does. Nobody wrecks God's day. I'm going to wreck God's day. Hey, you think too much of yourself. <laughs> you, you aren't wrecking God's day. But He does things, and, and you look at what He does. I, I mean, He rebukes Balaam using a donkey. I'm sure he's sitting there laughing the whole time he's doing it. He said, man, I'm going to have fun with this prophet. You know, I'm going to, you know. I mean, the angel is there with the sword. He didn't need the donkey to do it. Amen? But he does. I mean, some people think God doesn't have a sense of humor. I don't know about that. I mean, you read about you know, he finds things to do that he enjoys. You know, sometimes we all just find some things to enjoy, to love life. Lord gave us many things to enjoy. The Bible says, oh, taste and see. 
that the Lord is good. There's many things in nature and stuff out there that you should enjoy. Now, you enjoy watching the sunset? You ought to. It's beautiful. Enjoy looking at the lake, looking at the mountains? You should. It's beautiful. Those are things that God has made us to enjoy. So these are things that bring peace. What destroys the peace? Well, what destroys peace is uh, when we allow sin into our life. When man goes wrong is when he expects sin and gets a, his eyes off the Lord. 1 Peter chapter 3 again, verse 11, 12, it says, Let him askew evil. I, I remember another guy that used to eschew evil in the Bible. His name was Job. Eschew evil. Matter of fact, the Bible says of Job that there was none like him on the earth. You know what eschew evil means? It means to despise, to run away from it, and to flee it. To eschew evil. And do good. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Now look at what it says in 1 Peter 3, verse 12. I didn't read this one in the text. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and His ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. He's against them that do evil. You know, as a Christian, if you sin, God's against you. You say, you know, my Bible says, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And I ain't never met the man that's fully got victory over pride. That is a continuing fight in your life till the day you die. We fight it every day. We fight it every day. Pride is the biggest hindrance to God ever using you or God ever speaking to you or having fellowship with you. It's pride. I, I think that's one of the biggest sins of all time. That's the one that got Satan cast out of heaven. It was pride. His heart was lifted up. Pride. I, I've said this before. I'll say it again. You can't find me one passage. There's only one in Psalms where it looks like it, but if you read the context, it ain't correct. You can't find me one passage in the Bible where pride is ever used in good context. Not one. It's not there. It's not there. God resisteth the proud. Against you. He's against those that do evil. How are you going to have joy if God's against you? My children do not have joy when I chase them. Not as a rule. <laughs> I mean, that's not a fun experience for them. Now, the Lord will chase him, him whom he loved. Just because he takes your joy away from you doesn't mean he doesn't love you. But why is he doing that? Because he's not comforting you. He's chasing you. To bring you back to where you need to be. And get your eyes back on him. Back on him. So, you can love life. You say, how do I love life? Well, is your eyes on Jesus Christ? Is your eyes on Jesus? Is your thoughts established on him? Do you think about him? Next time you're in a lot of turmoil stress, anger, bitterness, say, is this because I'm thinking of what the Lord did for me? Or am I looking at the circumstances around me and allowing it to get to me and control me? You get your eye, it's like Peter. He starts sinking in the water. Why? Because he got his eyes off Jesus Christ. Till then, he was walking on water. Why did Peter want to walk on water? Who won it? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, come on. He's walking on water, but he gets his eyes off Jesus Christ. You know what the Christian life is? It's one walking on water or sinking. You're doing one or the other. It has to do with where your eyes are. Where your eyes are. All right, let's uh, have every head bowed and every eye closed. So I call up Brother Mike to do a song. I'd like to ask you, First of all, have you ever received Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you ever sir, received Jesus Christ as your Savior? If you've never received Jesus Christ 
as your Savior. The Bible says, There is no peace, saith my God, unto the wicked. Don't you realize you're wicked? All of sin comes short of the glory of God. You're no different. You need to receive Jesus Christ before it's eternally too late. You cannot start a real walk of peace and joy without Jesus Christ. You just can't. You need to put your full trust in Him and accept Him as your Savior. I met many Christians that are just miserable. Why? Because they get their eyes off Jesus Christ. They get their eyes off Jesus Christ. They allow that joy to be sucked out of them due to sin or the circumstances of life around them. I'm not saying life's easy. I'm saying there's joy in time of sorrow if your eyes is on Jesus Christ. There's joy in time of sorrow.